Okay, so welcome to the screencast for worksheet 11. Let's dive into it now. Okay, let's look at the discussion question 1. Um, give the IUPAC names of the following compounds. So the first one, always look out for the longest carbon chain. In this case, it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4. Both ways will give us the same answer. Um, Oh, but do I want to number it 1, 2, 3, 4? Or 1, 2, 3, 4? Know that there is one metal group here. So I want to try and minimize the number that's assigned to this metal group. So this will be 2 metal, 1, 2, 3, 4, butane. Okay, for part B, uh, the longest chain, let's see, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, while, however way I count it, I can only count it as uh, 5. So, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You will see that um, there's two there's a CH2CH3 group attached to the third carbon. So how do I call this group? What do I call this substituent? It is actually the ethyl substituent. It's like ethane, but it's like chop onto the molecule. Like how methyl is like methane, but chop onto the molecule. Okay, so this will be called 3 ethyl pentane. Okay, let's move on. Part C, we'll see that uh, what's the longest chain here. Okay, now be very careful. You may think that the chain is just like this. Okay, but note that there's a C2H5 group here. So the longest chain would actually be from here to there. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, carbon. Okay, so 7 carbon, it must be heptane. So what are the substituents that you see? Other than the main uh, chain that we accounted for, we have 1, 2, 3 methyl groups that we have not stated where they belong to yet. Okay, this is if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from left to right. Okay, let's see what are the numbers. If I assign it like this, I will have um, 3, 4, 4, tri metal. Ah, very good. 3, 4, 4, tri metal heptane. Okay. Now, if I wrote it in the opposite direction, let me see a different color. So you see what I mean? Okay, if I assign it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then it means that it will be. A four four five tri metal heptane. And you see that the numbers here total is eleven. Here are the numbers total is thirteen. So the first answer, this one, is correct because it gives you the smaller number. So let me erase the wrong answer. So you won't be confused. It's very purple. Okay, now let's look at the next question. Okay, which is also very tricky. Uh. Okay, you may think that again the longest chain is this, which has one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbon. But note that here there's a C3H7 group, which means that one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Which is the longest chain. So the longest chain has 7 uh, carbon, which means it's a heptane as well. Okay, so which one do I assign? How do I assign the numbers in this case? Okay, if I assign as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then it will be 
this is a metal group. This is a ethyl group. So which one should I write first? I should write the ethyl group first. Why? Because alphabetical order. So for ethyl, uh, two ethyl, oh, no space, two, four ethyl, two methyl heptane. Or again, if I use it in the opposite direction, if I name it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then it will be four ethyl, six methyl. Uh, immediately you see that this is bigger, so this is wrong. Okay, so this is correct. Now next, let's look at what's the longest chain. Now the longest chain should be in this direction. One, two, three, four, five. Five carbons. So if it's five carbons, it will be pen. Okay, this time we have a functional group over here. So it's pen one in. Okay, that's the most important functional group. Then we have over here a metal group that's unaccounted for. So if this is one, two, three, four, five, it means that it is four metal. Four metal pent one in. Okay, so next, uh, let's look at the next molecule, which is the longest chain. Uh, I think it's quite evidently that this is the longest chain. Even if I choose the other way, it's the same molecule. Can you see that this method as well as this method gives you the same molecule? Okay, you give me the same name. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six carbon. So one, two, three, three in, or one, two, three. Okay, if I count from both sides, it's the same. The C double bond C is at the center. So I can just assign it as one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it will be six. So it is hex. Hex three in, and then is a uh, three ethyl. Three ethyl, hex three in. Wow, this is taking longer than I thought it would take. <laughs> okay, G. So now we have more interesting uh, groups. Now note that the longest chain is again including this CH3 group at the top. Some of you may have forgotten it. So, given that the longest chain is 4 carbon, it is butane. Now we are left with 2 substituent. So how do I assign the numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, you may ask, what is the correct answer? Let me write down two possible solutions. Huh? Okay. Can, is it 2 bromo 3 chloro butane or is it uh, 3 bromo 2 oh sorry 2 chloro butane which is the correct answer okay the answer is actually the first one now when you encounter a situation like this, where it's bromo and chloro, and then like there are, you know, I never say which is more important or or what, right? How can you tell? And especially how the numbers are the same. You cannot use the numbers to differentiate, right? Okay, when the numbers are the same, then you need to see which one is heavier. Okay? The substituent that is heavier, you will give it higher priority. Okay, so con uh, comparing bromo and chloro, bromine is heavier than chlorine, judging by their AR. Hence, we try and make bromine the smaller number. Okay, that is why we choose 2-bromo-3-chloro-butane instead of 
three bromo, two coral butane. Okay, this is by convention. Okay, it's not written in the IUPAC rule, but I think you know along the way uh, they find that okay there are these cases, so you just keep, came up with more and more uh, conventions, so that it's easier for us to name. Okay, let's look at the next one, which is the longest chain. It will be over here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Five that means is pentane. We have two chloro group and one bromo group. So how do I name this? Which one should have priority? Okay, again, the bromine group should have priority. So I should number yes, one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> So two bromo, two bromo, three, four, di. Okay, let me shift it away. Di chloro. So this is two bromo, three, four, di chloro, three, four, di chloro pentane. Next, the longest carbon chain is just two carbon. So in this case, it will be called one. Two di bromo ethene. Do I need to put it one in? Okay, this it doesn't make sense to write it one in because both sides is one. Okay, so it one in sounds weird. So this one don't need to write it one in. J. Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, what's the longest chain? Uh, it's just like this. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's pentane. Uh, pen. Okay, the uh, one with priority, the functional group will be ethene. Uh, uh, e and E. So, my number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, the first way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this way, then it will be Two in. So we should number it as one, two, three, four, five from right to left. So pen two in and two in, then I have a one metal group, one chlorine group. So one chloro, since chlorine should come first, one chloro four. Metal pentuin. Okay, next. Longest chain. Oh, this is very easy. Which one should I assign as one? One should be here because both the functional groups are there. One, two, three. So, um, it sh the most important functional group here is alcohol. It should end with a OL. So, three carbon, so it's propyl. One no with one chloro. One chloro proper one no. Next, uh okay, the most important group here will be your acid group. Then what is the longest carbon chain? Four. So it will be butanoic acid with a chlorine. So, remember the most important functional group should be named the smallest number. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. If that's 1, then chlorine is attached to the third carbon. 3 chlorobutanoic acid. Okay. Oh, finally, we have an assignment question. Write the structural formula for 2 methyl hexane. Okay. So, when they ask you to write, the structural formula. Okay, in this case, they actually meant for you to draw it out. Okay, can you change it to, uh, change it to draw the structural formula for all this. Okay, hexane. So first, identify the stem. The stem here is hex, so we must draw six carbon. Six carbon. Then uh, there's a metal group at the second carbon, so draw a metal group. Okay, then we just fill in hydrogen for all. 
Note that each carbon should form four bonds. This is the final answer. No, I left one hydrogen out. Okay, so this is the correct answer. Next, hex 2 in. Okay, let me just zoom in. Hex 2 in, hex means there are 6 carbon. So draw 6 C first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hex 2 in means it's double bond at the second to third carbon. Then just draw single bond for the rest. And add in your hydrogens. Okay, note. This second carbon already has three bonds, so I should only draw one hydrogen here and only one hydrogen here. Okay, the rest, add in. Now you see why it's easier to draw skeletal formula. The skeletal formula of this, you can try it yourself too. It's just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, two in. Ah, so simple. Like a visa pay wave. Okay, like here, this is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2 metal. Okay. 2 chloro, 3, 3 dimethyl hexane. Ah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 3. Ah, first, let's draw the 2 chloro. A chlorine at the second carbon, then there's a metal group. At the third carbon, then just fill in hydrogen for the rest. Okay, that's it. If I were to draw the skeletal formula, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then 2 chloro, 3, 3 dimethyl. Okay, now, now I have heptane. Oh, why did we come up with heptane? So I must draw 7 carbon. Okay, let me just draw the C without any bonds first. Uh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2, 3, di bromo. 2, 3, di bromo. 2, chloro. 2, chloro. Heptane. Uh, okay, then just join everything up by single bonds and add in the hydrogens. Okay, so if I were to draw the skeletal formula, what will you look like? It will look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 3, dibromo, chlorine group here. See, very fast, right? Skeletal formula. I love it. I hope you do too. Okay, if you like skeletal formula, take chemistry in university. Okay, pen two all, oh, very simple. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, alcohol group at the second carbon, OH. And just add in hydrogen for the rest. F two ethyl butanoic acid. Okay, butanoic acid is 1, 2, 3, 4, O, O, H. I, I don't know, I just tend to always draw butanoic acid as an acid group on the right hand side. But you should know that if you draw the acid group on the right hand side, then this is the first carbon, this is the second carbon. So you must draw the ethyl group here. Ethyl is two carbon. So hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Hydrogen. Okay. If you were to draw it on the other the other way, it's also fine. So you can draw it like this.
Okay, both are correct. 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 Okay, the hydrocarbon C four H eight belongs to the homologous series called alkenes and exhibits isomerism. What is meant by the term isomerism? That means isomers have the same, so it must be the same something but different something. Same molecular formula but different structural formula. You know the full structural formula of the possible isomers of this compound and give the IUPAC names of the isomers. Okay, C4, H8, 2, 3, 4. Let's say the double one is the first one. So what is this called? This will be uh, built one in. Then we can also have it at the second carbon. And it will be called but 2 in. Okay. Is there one where the double bond is at the third carbon? No, because then it will be the same as but 1 in. Okay, so there's only two possible isomers. If you are marking, how do you give the marks? Okay, one mark for correct isomers, one mark for correct name. Name an alkane. 2 ethyl butane. Draw a structural formula based on the name. 2 ethyl butane. Butane, 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 ethyl, 1, 2. Okay, fill in the hydrogens. How to draw skeletal formula? 1, 2, 3, 4, then 1, 2. So nice, right? Give the correct IUPAC name of this alkane. Now, which is the longest chain? There's actually this 5 carbon over here. So, the correct name should be a pentane with a methyl group here. So, the methyl group is at the third carbon, 3 methyl pentane. Okay, as those are homologous series, tables are da da da. Deduce the name of the next member in the homologous series after methoxypropane and draw its full structural formula. Okay, so first we must observe the pattern uh. CH3O CH3. CH3O C2H5. So from here to here, you notice that at the end they plus a CH2, which is like a a homologous series. So from here to here, I must plus oops, plus a CH2, then you will get CH3OC4H9. Okay, this name will be methoxy butane. Draw its full structural formula. C H H H O C C C C Yes, this would be the correct answer. Draw an isomer of the ether and name it. Okay, we have learned actually isomers of ether. I showed you an example before. It is alcohols. So for example, The name will be prop one one no. 
Now there are various answers for this um, 5a part 2. You can be proper 1 no, proper 2 no, proper 3 no, or you can have the um, metal, uh, the oxy group, right? You can have this ester group, uh, ether group, be in the center of, let's say, here. Okay, but the name will be different. Now, this is called methoxypropane. So, if I were to draw it, let me use another color. You can also have an answer like this, like C, C, O, C, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, ah, yeah, okay. Then you just end in the hydrogen. Then this will be called ethoxy propane. Explain why the boiling point increases for successive members of the homologous series. Okay, for this is again very standard. Okay, how standard it is when MR increases. Okay, surface area of molecules increases okay therefore when the walls stronger therefore more energy required to overcome stronger when the walls forces between molecules. Therefore, boiling point increases. Student A, the empirical formula of ethers is always the same since they have the same general formula. Do you agree with student A? Explain your answer. No, you should not agree with student A. Why is that so? You can try writing the empirical formula here. Okay. What's the empirical formula for the first one? We have C2, uh, let's try the molecular formula first. C2H6O, so that's the same as the empirical formula. Let's look at the second one. C3H8O, okay, it will also be the same as the empirical formula, but Note that these two are not the same. Okay, so you say no, no. For instance, for instance, Methoxy, well, methoxy, methane is C2H6O. But the M formula for methoxy uh, ethane is C3H8. I'm rushing for chemi video, so H8, oh, okay, even though they have the same general formula. Ethers are fl highly flammable and can undergo combustion in the presence of oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. Okay, so methoxy methane, just now we wrote that it's CH3O, CH3, 
plus O2 gives us uh, CO2 plus H2O. So just balance it. You should have two here. How many hydrogen? Three here. Then it doesn't balance. Oh no, everything times two. So I have three plus four, seven. Okay, this will be your answer. Okay, so 30.4 dm3 of methoxymethane underwent complete combustion. Calculate the volume of gaseous products formed from the reaction. Okay, so first, find the number of moles of methoxymethane, which is 30.4 divided by 24 dm3. What does it give you? Let me just is there a calculator? Yes. No thanks. Thirty point four divided by twenty-four. Okay. It gives me one point two six six seven. Okay. Therefore, uh, 2 moles of methoxymethane gives me 10 moles of gaseous product. So, number of moles of gaseous product 1.2667 divided by 2 times 10 which means that it times 5. It will give you 6.3333 Then, volume of the ga gaseous product will be 6.3333 times 24 dm3 152 dm3 okay so this is um, all the answers <gasps> Okay, I'm one minute late for a video, okay? That's all from me. Thank you, class.